Hi everyone, it's Shinko. Um, I decided it. I was. This is a video that I've been planning on for a while. Um, most people when they experience becoming when they become deaf, it's a slow, gradual thing, or you're just born with it, and so you never knew what it was like without hearing. Um. Me, it was literally overnight. Um, I have a different st I have a different video about my death in 2015, but to shortly explain it, I died. I stopped breathing in my sleep in 2015. I had died, and I was in a coma for ten days. I. On, on, they use a scale for comas of how likely you are to wake up and how likely you aren't. And I was way at this end. I was way at the end that I probably wouldn't wake. Of course, my family held out for me, but insurance wasn't going to. I truly was blessed and lucky that I awoke on day 10 when on day 11 they were going to, you know, pull it. So, but in that instance, when I had woken up, the machine's breathing for me and everything, I can't talk. My mother had happened to be close to me, close to my ears, and telling me, you know, don't panic, an accident happened. And that's when I started thinking, well, maybe it was a car accident that I just don't remember. You know, I don't remember getting in any car. But it was later explained to me that I had stopped breathing and no one knows why. I was drug tested, there was nothing in my system except cold medicine and that cold medicine had a little bit of alcohol which was like 0 0.008 or something. So definitely not enough to stop breathing. Um, I didn't have drugs in my system, I didn't have anything so no one knew why. Um, but when I stopped breathing I went into cardiac arrest for 10 minutes, my ex-husband did CPR. And, but by the time the ambulance came, I was already flatlining. They estimate that I was probably dead about five minutes, almost. So either way, there was no understanding of what had happened, why. We found out later it was from black mold. However, going back to the topic at hand, what is it like to lose your hearing overnight? I was always into musical theater. I was a drama geek, I was a choir geek, a musical theater, all of it. I loved it. And I would do anything to go back to it. But either way, I worked hard. So hard. And when I was 17, my health began to deteriorate, to go down. So it became harder and harder. And by the time I was 22, that's when it happened. I had given birth to my son a few months prior. So my immune system was already down and everything. Well, when I woke up, it took me a moment to realize, well, why can't I hear you? You know, my mom was close to my ears, and when she stepped away and was talking, the doctors were talking, I realized that it sounded like gibberish to me. I can't hear them. So that was my first question when they pulled the tube out. Why can't I hear you? Why can't I hear anyone? I can only hear you a little bit. Now see, I had 20% hearing back then. And of course the doctors were scribbling furiously, you know, and my mother being a nurse had told me the stories when you lose, when you become blind or you become deaf, sometimes it comes back, but more often than not, it doesn't. So then I already knew, I already knew it wasn't going to come back. Either way. I would, draw, I would draw and write a lot, 
my mother and I talked about getting sign language classes, which are more expensive than you think. Um, but through the hospital, without even trying, I began learning to lip read. Now, lip reading is an art. It is not an exact science. The people you know, it's easier to lip read, but when you're talking to a complete stranger with different mouth movements than you're used to, it's much harder. So it's more of an art. So if anyone tries to tell you they're a lip reader, they're not perfect at it. No one is. <sighs> but it was hard. It wrecked me. Music is my life. I love music. And forever is going to sound different to me. I have a cochlear implant now. So that helps. But it still sounds different to me. Everything does. When you first get your cochlear implant, it sounds robotic. Everyone who's speaking to you sounds like they're a robot speaking. It's so weird, and it takes time to get used to it. I can't do musical theater anymore. I can't do choir. I can't properly hear myself, hear my pitch, nor hear my cues. But it devastated me. I worked hard all those years. I digress. When someone loses their hearing overnight, they're going to be depressed. Everything from now on, you're, when you're watching TV, you're not watching TV, you're reading TV. You're reading the captions. And on YouTube especially, it's m even harder. Because there's so many videos you want to watch that there's no captions for. Or it says it has captions, but they never appear. So it's really frustrating because the content creators lose out on revenue. And you, yourself, lose out on what could have been an awesome video. So that's why whenever I see a creator put their own captions in, and you can tell when they did. Instead of the auto-translate, it's automatically boom right there. That's when someone has taken the time to put the captions in. I will always thank the creator when they do that. Because it means a lot to me. I lost my hearing because the lack of oxygen killed those muscles. Just as simple as that. Just a lack of oxygen for a, a bit here or there can really damage a lot. And it was three types of killer black mold that was in the apartment I lived. And I had lived in that apartment for literally a couple months. The air would feel, would, would feel damp and heavy. But outside it'd be clean, clear. And it always felt like I had a cold. And I should have listened to those signs. Because if I had, maybe it would have saved, it would have saved my life. You know? Maybe it would have done something. I still regret th those days. And I always will. But in, but in the end... I'm grateful for those days, too, because it made me who I am today. It made me meet the people I met today. You know, I met my boyfriend because it, these chain events helped me meet my boyfriend. So, either way, I guess I'm grateful I wish it could have been it happened a different way. I wish it could have been like maybe not at all. And I still meet the people I meet and become who I am. But I don't think that's possible. So I'll leave it off here. That's what it's like to lose your hearing. You're in a world of hearing and then you're it's like you're underwater for forever. People get frustrated at you. You get frustrated yourself saying, I can do better. And then some people just stop talking to you.
Because what's the why what's the worth? When you're learning sign language and you have no one to practice with, even from a class, it's hard. You know, like Skillshare, for example. It's yeah, you can learn it definitely, but you don't have anyone to practice it with. So that's the issue. You know, my boyfriend's long distance as well. It's hard. When we get together and start living together officially, it's, you know, maybe we can then. But either way, you're underwater for the rest of your life. There's a saying that deaf people have. When you're blind, you're separated from color. When you're deaf, you're separated from people. Because a lot of people don't want to deal with you. They repeat things over and over and it makes them frustrated. And it makes you feel embarrassed like you did something wrong. So it just stinks. I wish it was a more slow, gradual thing and so I could have known and done some prevention things. But either way, we are dealt the hands we are and I still feel blessed. Because I'm still, I still have a good life. You know, I'm not dead. I'm alive. So, thanks for listening, I guess. I hope you all have a good day.